Hello, my name is Greg Bjornstad, and welcome to another installment of my video tutorial series for EVIT, my new Vineyard Database software program. Today I'm going to show you how to use the features and functions on the Vineyard Details layer. As usual, we will begin from the main menu. So the Vineyard, uh, as we mentioned before, the, uh, these are the four levels of the hierarchy here on the top bar. So uh, I'm going to click on Vineyard vineyards and see that we have the uh, opportunity to put in a group here and search. We can go right to the vineyard list, vineyard details, or add a new vineyard at this level. So to run through the course, I'll just click on the vineyard list first. And here we see in bold the, uh, the, the four vineyards that I have in, um, in my demo file. The uh, name of the grower is underneath and grayed out a little bit. And we have the primary contact over here on the right side. Uh, we also have the options button that appears at every layout, where this will take us to the vineyard detail layout. We can add a new vineyard, search, show all is like a refresh button to, um, if you've done a query, you get to uh, pull back all the records that uh, we have in file. Or we can export our vineyard data. So I'll click on the vineyard detail. And that'll take us into uh, record number one of four that we have. We can scroll across the records like this. And um, we are in the fourth record. We have then um, the familiar blue font, which acts like a hyperlink, which will take us back up to the lower details uh, layout. And here, just to emphasize where we are, the new details is here in the upper left. And the uh, vineyard button up here is, uh, is in green font. So that helps us keep track of where we are. So uh, then moving down, we can see that the, uh, the gate code appears at the vineyard level. And um, that seems like a good place for it. Um, this comes in handy when we, uh, when we get into the um, iPhone layouts where um, it's good, especially for interns that uh, can have either running on their phones and help them to get around. Uh, we'll drill down a little bit more on, on the maps in a moment. But uh, all of that information that, that uh, folks need to access the vineyard, address, um, gate code, etc., all right here. So this is kind of the main, uh, where the physical location of the vineyard is. And uh, that becomes important to the map functions on it get there in a little bit. And um, at a glance, we can see we've got the primary contact, we've got the, uh, the email for the primary contact, and clicking on this here will generate a, uh, a blank email in your email client. And then uh, with the iPhone, we can also click on this phone number and then it will uh, dial our primary contact. So that's what's happening on the address tab. I'm going to skip over the blocks tab for now. We'll end up there because that will take us down to the uh, to the lower level of uh, the vineyard details to the block details. So I will click on contacts. Uh, I think we've talked about contacts before. It's very much in the same way. Where we see that we have selected a primary contact here and uh, have other folks um, also listed. Um, we can have their, their titles. Uh, there and emails and phone numbers. We can choose which ones we would like to have displayed. Uh, work number, home number, cell phone, and the same goes for addresses as well. Um, if you have an incorrect um, contact or the person has left the company, we can delete them here. Uh, if they move on, we can also reassign them within the Contacts detail page. I think I'll just go on that button now just to, uh, just to remind us that we have contacts. First, last, title, email, the, uh, the grower they're associated with, and which of the vineyards they're associated with. In this case, we've got the Jones language. Cell phone number is, uh, is the one that we've selected to, to input here, and then we can also choose to display that one here as well. Same goes for the address, mailing, or physical, or both. And uh, 
here's the reassigning that I talked about. Um, if uh, Deborah Luna were to move on and go to another company. So when we run all of our work that we want to do here, we can simply close the window and move back on the contacts tab. So the contracts, uh, at a glance, uh, you can see the highlights there. Uh, the status of this particular vineyard is ex that it's expired. The S indicates that this contract is um, is developed at the sub-block level. If there was a B, it would be at the block level, a V at the vineyard level, or a G at the grow level. So depending on how you do business, this is a way for you to um, to assign your contract to the right entity. If you purchase everything from uh, a grower, then that would you just have one contract and all the uh, the information would appear in the contract. If you had several different contracts assigned at sub-block levels, then that would be a way for you to organize them. So at a glance, you can see what the pricing is. Uh, we also have a way to accommodate um, dollar values or, um, or formulas. We have a payment date. We don't have one in this example here on the terms. Files over here indicates that, um, that we have attachments on this record. So it could be a PDF of the, uh, of the contract. Um, it could be a Word document. It could also be a PDF document that has the uh, final um, signatures as well. So um, anything that uh, is going to be helpful for you to attach to this record is available. So the maps. We have um, an opportunity to house more than one market. So uh, there might be ways for um, something, this is just something I pull off of Google and create the map myself, put some information on that. Uh, we could use various uh, irrigation maps or flora maps, development maps, anything like that. To, uh, to add. There is no limit to the number of maps that you could add um, in terms of the quantity. Uh, certainly, the more attachments you're adding to any record, the more experience a slow down performance. So, that would be a um, Then, uh, let's see, we have uh, the vineyard maps there. We can also see the Google maps. So, this is going to take the address from uh, the address tab. And show us what we have there. We can also, um, and if you look at it, make it a little bit smaller, then we can also choose the type. And uh, probably seems to be the most interesting for us to show, to show those things out. Alright, and then um, I will not will uh, take you to your um, file organization system so that you could uh, browse to it and select it and perform it. Observations are um, at a glance. You can see what we have for, um, uh, again, these little um, letters identify the block in the sub level that the observation is made at. Here is the text of the, um, of the observation. Who was the observer? And here are categories that uh, I knew we installed with, uh, with the 1.4 feature. So these are all user-defined um, categories. You can make them to suit your needs, to customize it for the best way for you and your team to work. Again, files over here indicates that we've got a picture or audio or some kind of uh, attachment, PDF, document, anything. So uh, as we move across the, uh, we can we can kind of move across the records and see what we've got um, going at each level here. Uh, same is true for on the any of these tabs. So that's a way to get across. Um, coming back to the blocks tab, this is uh, this identifies the blocks that are. Um, Available or attached or developed at the Jones Home Ranch. 
So we have two blocks here, one and two. The, they are both connected to pin and wall. It is possible that they could have more than one variety, in which case we would see those here, in the same way that we see that there are two clones here. So this, the, uh, what this tells me at a glance is that there's two sublots attached to this, uh, this, this block one. Uh, we've got also got two different pinning systems as well. So um, I will go ahead and click on this one here, block one. And this will be a great way to introduce my next video, block details. And that's where we are here. So uh, until next time, we will uh, we'll go into block details. And thank you for watching. And we'll catch up with you on the next installment. Bye.